Good morning, grade fives. Today we're going to be looking at direct and indirect speech. We're going to start off by looking at what direct speech is. We're then going to move forward and look at what indirect speech is before finishing off with looking at how we change sentences from direct speech to indirect speech. So I want you to look at the extract from the text that we read last week. So if you remember, I sent through a document which was the Shadow Warrior, and it was quite a long story. And as you read through it, you would have noticed that there was quite a lot of conversation going on between the characters. And in fictional texts, when we see this kind of talking that happens between our characters, we write it in in or indirect speech. So we write it in direct speech. And if you look at the section that I've taken out and put on your screen, paragraphs 33 to 36, it is basically a collection of direct speech quotes. So if you look here, the king laughed. You are a girl. You cannot ride a horse. You cannot swing a sword. You do not have the strength to pull a bow. You are too poor to be educated. You are not clever, but stupid to think you will defeat the jinn. This is a direct quote. And if you continue, you can see more direct quotes. If you look there, we've got another one. And that takes up most of the 34th paragraph. And in paragraph 35, again, we have a direct quote. And we finish off with our last direct quote. Quote or direct speech is when we use direct speech we write the exact words of the speaker between inverted commas. So if I say something to you, you're going to write down exactly the words that I used. You're not going to change anything about them. You're not going to modify them. That is direct speech. So if you want to look at an example, we can look at the example of why is this not doing what it's supposed to be doing? I am hungry. So this boy, we've got two boys here. This boy here is saying, I am hungry. If we put that in direct speech, we're going to go, the boy said, comma, open inverted commas, I am hungry, full stop, close inverted commas. You can do it the other way as well, and you can start with the words spoken and end with who said it. So your inverted commas, the words that go between them, are the words that were actually said. And you might know these as quotation marks, inverted commas, or 66s and 99s. For grade five, you need to know them as inverted commas. So how do we turn speech bubbles to text? So I'm here in the corner because I miss you. What I want you to do is to imagine that the words are sheep. I've got three sheep here, I, miss, and you. Each word is a sheep. They don't go together, but they maintain the same order as they had in the speech bubble. You'll notice that I've removed the punctuation. So I is not punctuated and you does not have a full stop. And that's where we want to work with for now. You then need to imagine that the sheep need to be kept in a pen. And for the purpose of direct speech, your pen is your inverted commas. In order to turn speech bubbles to text, you need to ensure that your first word starts with a capital letter. And the reason for this is, if you do not have that capital letter on the first word, or the correct punctuation on your last word, your sheep can escape from their pen. See, off they go. So what you need to do is you need to ensure that you capitalize the first word, which I have done, I is now in a capital letter, and you need to add the correct punctuation to the last one. For this example, I'm putting a full stop and you'll see why now. What you need to do is you need to identify the speaker. A comma needs to appear somewhere in the sentence. So I've told you that it's me. So I'm going to say Ms. Gersbach said comma. This is where your comma is going to go if you're going to start by mentioning the speaker. 
So Ms. Gersbach said, comma, open inverted commas, I miss you, full stop, close inverted commas. If you miss even just one punctuation mark in an exam, you will not get a mark for the sentence. It is only correct if it is completely correct. So, what I want you to do on a piece of paper, and you're going to need to pause this video when you do it, is you need to write what is in the speech bubbles in direct speech on your piece of paper. Please put them on their own lines. This is a boy, so you can just say the boy, and you can just say the girl. So I want you to try that, and please remember, whenever you use direct speech, if it's a new person speaking, you start on a new line. Please, for this exercise, use the word said. For today, we are just working with said. Later on in the year, we're going to move forward and we'll use other words. So right now, you need to pause the video and complete these two sentences. Now that you've done that, these are the answers. The boy said, comma, very important, open inverted commas, capital I, I like pizza, full stop, closed inverted commas. If you said, open inverted commas, I like pizza, comma, closed inverted commas, said the boy, full stop, it is also correct. You can also say the boy said, full stop. Those are both correct. And then on your new line, remember, new speaker, new line, the girl said, comma, open, inver open inverted commas, I like pasta, full stop, closed inverted commas. And again, you can change the order. Open inverted commas. I like pasta, comma, closed inverted commas, said the girl or the girl said, full stop. I hope you got those correct. If you didn't, I challenge you to listen to what is said around you and try and put it into indirect speech. So if your mom tells you this evening, go wash the floor, you can go and do that into a direct speech quote. We're now going to move on to indirect speech. Now, indirect speech is often called reported speech, and we use it when we want to report what somebody has said. So if you go home to your mom and dad, and you're telling them what was said at school, you cannot quote it directly. Because you're going home to mom and dad and saying, Miss Gersbach misses you. I don't miss your parents, I miss you. So you're going to go and tell your parents, Miss Gersbach misses us. Now, we're going to use the I am hungry sentence again. And this is what you need to do. In indirect speech, the boy said that he was hungry. So there's a couple of changes here. Number one, we do not include inverted commas in indirect or reported speech. There are no inverted commas, okay? That is direct speech, and you need to remember that. That is the number one reason why kids lose marks in exams. It's because they've included inverted commas in indirect speech. They must not be there. So the boy said, that, I've included the that, and you'll see the only word that's actually changed from the original sub, uh, sentence, sorry, the only two words that have changed, are I, which becomes he, was hungry. Because if I go home and say this to my dad, for example, I can't say the boy said that I was hungry. I wasn't hungry. The boy was not saying that me, Ms. Gersbach, was hungry. He was saying that he, the boy, was hungry. So we need to change how we refer to him, and that's why we change the pronoun. So, how do we change from direct speech to indirect speech? I want us to start with the sentence, Miss Gersbach said, I miss you. And remember, this is in direct speech. We are now going to change it to indirect speech. The first thing you need to do is identify the speaker and write it down. So in this sentence, who is the speaker? It's Miss Gersbach. So you need to write that down. The next thing you need to do is identify the reporting verb and write it down. So your reporting verb 
is a word like said. Now we are using said today, but it could be replied, asked, inquired. There are a lot of different words that you can use instead of said, and we'll actually go through those next week when we look at homophones. So in this sentence that we've got here, our reporting verb is said. So we're going to go ahead and write that down. So, so far we've got Ms. Gersbach said. So what is our next step? Our next step is to write the word that after the verb. And that verb that I'm referring to is your reporting verb. So Ms. Gersbach said, you're then going to write that. It's just that. Ms. Gersbach said that. We're now three steps into that, into this, and we're now going to go to the fourth step. The next thing you need to do is to change the pronouns. And the way you do that is by first identifying the pronouns. What is a pronoun? Of course, a pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun because Ms. Gersbach misses the kids. Okay? So, I and you are our pronouns and we need to change them. If you're going to go home and tell your mom and dad, Ms. Gersbach said, or what Ms. Gersbach said, you're not going to say Ms. Gersbach said that I. You need to change it. Because I am female, we are going to use the word she. And you, in, if it is you going home and telling your parents, you are going to say us. But I want you to think about this for a second. What if it is not you reporting this, but Mrs. Dembovsky was in the class and she went and said what I said to somebody else? What would you become? Ms. Gersbach said that she it would be them. Our last step is to put any verbs, verbs sorry put any verbs spoken by the speaker in past tense. So if we look at the word spoken, I miss you, our verb is miss. And if we are dealing with present simple tense, which is what we're going to be using today, we are just going to change it to present, sorry, simple past tense. Miss in simple past tense becomes missed. So our sentence will read when it's finished. Miss Gersbach said that she missed them. Remember your capital letter on the M and your full stop at the end of the sentence. So for today, you need to complete an online quiz. The quiz can be found at the link that is at the bottom of this video or on your instruction sheet. Now, grade fives, I need you to listen very carefully. Because the quiz marks itself, it is sensitive to punctuation and spelling. So if a word is spelt wrong, and on that note, I apologize for the spelling mistake last week. Sorry, it has been fixed. If the word is spelt incorrectly in your answer, it is going to mark it wrong. When you are finished with the quiz and your results show, you can go and look at where you went wrong and it will actually give you the correction. Please make a note of where you went wrong. So if you get question three wrong, go and look and see, okay, I really did not understand this or uh, I spelt the third word incorrectly. That was my mistake. There is a big difference between spelling a word incorrectly and not knowing how to change a sentence from direct speech to indirect speech. You're going to practice quite a few sentences and I want you to take your time and if you need to go back, rewatch the video and try again, please do. I am asking you to please put your name and your class in the exercise just so I can kind of get an idea when we go back to school where we are struggling. When you're done, you then need to do an additional activity. You're going to look at your result from the exercise you did, and you're going to complete one of the following exercises. 
If your result borders on two activities, look at where you went wrong. So for example, if you achieved between zero and seven, or if you achieved zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you get the picture. You need to go and do the exercise that is linked next to it. If you got from seven to 12, you need to do this exercise. And if you got from 12 to 15, you need to do this exercise. You're welcome to try the easier ones and harder ones. And again, if you got 12 or seven, you need to see where you went wrong. If you really didn't understand taking direct speech to indirect speech, then start with the easier one. And if it's too easier, too easy, then jump to this harder one. If it was just spelling, please start with the higher one as it will be better for you and will probably help you a lot more. So, something I want to include for a couple of lessons is a riddle. And you need to do this by yourself, with help, think about it. You'll get the answer tomorrow. Mary has four daughters and each of her daughters has a brother. How many children does Mary have? You think you know the answer? Please write it down on the corner of a piece of paper, keep it in your head, and at the beginning of tomorrow's lesson, I will give you the answer to this riddle. Five, enjoy your exercises, keep practicing, and when we get back to school, I know this is a very difficult concept, we are going to go through it again, so don't stress. We have time, we will do this three or four times throughout the year, and you'll do it next year, and you'll do it in high school, so we will get there. Until then, have an awesome Tuesday, and we'll see you for tomorrow's lesson.